Today we are going to learn how to go from a basic shmup to an awesome shmup. Hi everybody, this is Christian from LazyDesk Academy. Welcome to this new exciting tutorial series. If you've been following this channel, you saw that we just finished a big tutorial series about how to make a basic shmup in Pico 8. Today is phase two of that shmup cinematic universe, so to speak. This tutorial series is all about how to make an advanced shmup, or maybe I would even say an awesome shmup. Now, fair warning before we begin, this is not a beginner tutorial. If this is the first game that you ever worked on, then probably the basic shmup tutorial series is where you wanna get started. Also, fair warning, today we're not gonna do any coding, today we're just gonna prepare. This is gonna be a more of a lecture, and actually I just wanna, you know, show you like the 10 different designs that it came up with for our advanced shmup. Looking back on Cherry Bomb, our basic shmup, there are two things I'd like to improve upon. First, Cherry Bomb was a really outdated design. Shmups are retro, yes, but Space Invaders is a little bit too retro. We had static, repetitive levels, and that was fine for our first game. But now I want to make a more substantial shmup with a scrolling background and dynamically spawning enemies. The second problem with Cherry Bomb was that it was a bit of a hodgepodge of different ideas. There was no common thread holding everything together. There wasn't anything about that game that made it stand out from even something basic as Space Invaders. To address both problems, we need to spend more time doing some pre-planning in these early stages of the project, something we basically didn't do previously at all. For example, we need to do research. At this point, I already released two videos about researching shmups and you should check them out if you haven't already. And the reason why we're focusing so much on those early stages is that your ability to control and steer your project is the greatest in early stages. Later on, we already have some code written, we already have created some artwork. Our ability to course correct the project along the way will diminish as we go on. At some point, we're just committed to making the game that we planned. But it's early on where your decisions matter the most. Quite often, projects fail because something went wrong in those early stages. So increasingly, I've come to the conclusion that mockups are the single most effective tool to design and plan your game early on, especially when it comes to Pico 8. So what is a mockup? Well, mockup is like a fake screenshot. You open up Photoshop or Esprit or you know any kind of image editing tool and you create a fake screenshot of what your game will look like when it's finished. And there's so many advantages to doing this. Well, first of all, it allows you to just nail a visual style, a vibe to the game. It creates like a vision of what your game will be. Another great advantage of mockups, and we're gonna see that in a second, is that it allows you to test decisions early on. You can test, you know, what size a sprite is gonna be like. You can test what kind of color palette you're gonna use. There's all sorts of fascinating decisions that you can just test without writing a single piece of code before committing to anything. And this allows you to pick the right ideas for your project. This is a concept we're gonna come back to. It's called fail faster. You wanna create an environment where you can test out ideas and fail those ideas as quickly as possible so you can get rid of them and focus only on the ideas that work. And another thing that I really like about mockups is that it allows you to put things down, to, to write things down that are difficult to kind of like express in words or you know put your finger on it. A lot of the things about games are not really something that can be written out or spelled out you know explicitly and uh, mockups allow you just to cut to the chase and like show you okay this is what the game will be looking like. I don't know if you're like me but I think most people when they go to Steam and are shopping for games and trying to uh, you know ascertain whether a certain game is something for them, they will just look at screenshots, in-game screenshots of what the game looks like. And I think the same applies to the development of games. And another powerful effect is also that it allows you to recognize blind spots. So you might have some ideas about what the game is gonna be like, but you're only focusing on the things that you are focusing on, but inevitably there's gonna be some things that you are ignoring but you're not aware of it. Creating a mock-up allows you to recognize the things that you haven't thought about. Okay, so you've thought maybe about how your ship is gonna look like and what kind of environment it's gonna be in, but what are the enemies, you know? 
Now to wrap up this pitch of mockups, there is like an interesting paradox happening when you think about, you know, who are mockups actually best for? You would think that mockups are good for artists, and they are. If you are an artist and you are used to expressing your ideas using pixel art, then mockups are obviously a very straightforward and no-brainer kind of way to, you know, put down some ideas about the game that you're going to be working on. Art is already the way you think. But paradoxically, mockups are also really, really good for people who aren't bad artists, who are not really good at art. Because in this kind of situation, the art is going to be the bottleneck. You will be limited by the things that you can actually draw. And you want to make sure that this game that you'll be working on is something that's actually something that you can pull off with your limited skills. Plus, the way to become a better artist is by having more practice. And mockups are a fantastic way to practice game art. With that out of the way, we're gonna look at some mockups I created for phase two some time ago. Uh, I will be following two rules here. Rule number one, you never make just one mockup. Always make at least three mockups. We're gonna discuss reasons for that later on. Rule number two is that you want to make sure when you make mockups that they are comparable to each other. So you want to make sure that, you know, the elements in the mockup are the same. I'm going to show you what I mean right now. Oh, one last thing I should clarify. This is not going to be a pixel art workshop. That's a little outside of the scope of this tutorial. I'll maybe make a dedicated series on the subject one day. However, what I will try to do now is to convey the challenges I had, the things I had difficulties with, the process I went through to overcome some of these difficulties, and you know the sources I drew inspiration from. And also because somebody will almost certainly want to know, the software I'm using here is called Sprite, and it is, yeah, it's great. All right, so this is a mock-up. So the mock-up is like this screen here. This is just like some scribbling board for different designs. But yeah, this is a mock-up. Uh, I called this mock-up Star Panda because it is inspired by a Famicase 2019 entry called Star Panda by the artist uh, Panda Kero. I actually created this in November 2019. That's right, for the eagle-eyed listeners, like if you watched the um, We Are All Game Beginners video that you maybe saw, some footage of a little prototype I even made uh, back then. I was in the middle of working on pork like when I got like this drive to make shmups. And now, like almost four years later, here we are <laughs> making the game. <laughs> okay, so there's a little story here as well. And which is, I actually reached out to Panda Kero um, and I asked them if, um, if I can make a tutorial based on their card. And they said no. Pandakura said like they um, had some ideas, they want to maybe make their own game based on that kind of artwork. So they asked me uh, to make at least changes, like to make sure that maybe it's a different animal, that's not a panda, but it's a different animal, and make maybe some visual changes to clearly distinguish my game from from uh, actual star panda from the Famicase card. But the real lesson here is that you should accept a no for answer. I think this is something very important. We're gonna also talk about it later on. Like it's fine to get inspiration so and so forth, but if you're gonna use somebody's art and you should ask them about this, and if they say no, then you should accept that. But anyway, let me walk you through the process here. I sadly, I didn't have any, I didn't record any, you know, time lapse or anything. So I cannot really show you how I made this art. I basically, um, I created like, I'm using this Sprite program. I create like a template where I have like a little window that is the size of a Pico 8 screen and then some gray space around it so I can do some doodles for different things. Um, this shape here, that's kind of like a shape that is present on the cart. I even made like a little little prototype, little animation to how it would look if you bank left or right and how you would create the flame. Things that we kind of like already covered in the basic shmup tutorial. Now this whole idea that you are, you know, flying closely above a desert surface, so to speak, that is actually something that was inspired by a different artist. And uh, there's a pixel artist called Polo Vinkin or Vector Pixel Star. There's like two different Twitter accounts that post uh, this artwork. I don't know if they're both related or what's happening there. But you know, anyway, back then this person posted like this really cool animated GIF of you know a spaceship flying above um, desert ground and speed lines. And I thought it was very inspiring. 
So um, yeah, this whole concept was inspired by that GIF as well. And there's really something happening here. And this is where it gets interesting. We, like looking at this, we already made a lot of decisions, right? We already make decisions about the size of the sprite. This sprite is way bigger than a basic schmuck tutorial, right? We also made decisions about a very limited color palette as well. We also made decisions about the size of the enemies that we are encountering. Those are really big enemies compared to enemies that we had in the basic schmuck tutorial. But also there is like kind of two different ways in which those um, vertical schmups are dealing with the background. And that's something that was not covered in the schmup words tutorial um, video because it's not something I found a word for. That's something that I kind of like stumbled or across. In some schmups, I would call it call them fast scrolling schmups. The background scrolls really fast and it's really repetitive. So it's not so much, the background is not so much about you know features in the background, but it's really just more about conveying the sense of speed. This is a fast scrolling schmup. I we kind of like set up the mock-up so it kind of like implies a fast scrolling schmup. There's a different type, and we're gonna have some examples of those later on. Slow scrolling schmups are, you know, the background sc scroll slowly and you see surface features that you can sometimes even interact with. Maybe there's some tanks or gun turrets that you can shoot down that are in the background. And yeah, that's not this kind of schmup. It's a fast scrolling schmup. Something that I think this um, mock-up really nails, it nails something that I call the visual identity, which is visual identity is kind of like this when I look at a screenshot of this game, do I recognize that this is this specific game or am I like, I don't know, I don't remember which game it is. Uh, there's a bit of a problem when, when you look at all of the shmups from the basic shmup shum showcase, you look at some of the screenshots, I you sometimes can't remember which shmup it is. And that's to be expected. A lot of people were there following it, my tutorial and so, you know, a lot of games ended up looking like my game, but also like, Cherry Bomb also looks kind of like Space Invaders. There is not really a good visual identity happening with Cherry Bomb in the first place. Not so much with this mock-up. This looks distinct. This looks very recognizable, very orange, very bold color palette, very clear, you know, panda, <laughs> panda inspired enemies. So in this category, this mock-up really excels. Um, something that I talked about is that there are certain elements I want to have in each one of those mock-ups so I can compare them to each other. I want to see the player's ship. I want to see popcorn enemy. I want to see at least one big enemy, bigger enemy, not a boss, but like a bigger enemy. I want to see enemy bullets. I want to see player bullets, but uh, this mockup is an early mockup. I didn't have a player bullet. And I want to see a pickup. So generally what we're going to see is that throughout all of these different mockups, we're going to see all those elements coming up here. So I can compare, you know, different, different mockups with each other. You can see a little bit, I'm, I was kind of experimenting with different enemy designs here. Um, I quickly arrived at this idea that you're, um, because I think that's one of the descriptions of Star Panda is that you are a panda pilot, and, but your enemies are koala bears. Um, so yeah, there are the different designs of the enemies are koala bear inspired. You can see that I was uh, experimenting with different art styles, maybe adding some more like, you know, shading or, you know, tech technological features to the enemies, but they were kind of very distracting. And in the end, you know, this uh, white style was very striking and, and worked the best for this design. Uh, I also had like different designs for different pickups, but again, I went with a simple star because again, it's called Star Panda, so it kind of makes sense. So yeah, I probably won't be making this design in the first place, again, because the artist kind of like uh, was not comfortable with me copying, you know, exactly uh, that Famicase design. But there is a positive thing. You might have noticed that this looks very similar to Orange Shooter by Angelo Donto on a basic Shmup showcase. And I think Angelo did a great job with kind of like this design. Again, took this and put it in a completely different direction. There's bug enemies and so forth. So it's a very different kind of shmup. And I'm very glad that Angelo decided to uh, create something based on that design. I think it's really paid off in this case. Like his shmup definitely looks different than other shmups from the basic shmup showcase. All right, moving on. So this is the second design. This is called, I call this Deep Core FD. And again, slightly inspired by um, one of the Famicase cards. This is not quite as explicitly inspired, just like roughly inspired by one of the Famicase cards, which is a um, card called Meltdown by anti-real. So on this thing, I wanted to briefly mention something that's a bit of a tough subject, but I wanted to still mention this, politics. 
And you know, politics is a dirty word in games. You know, a lot of people are complaining, ah, get the politics out of my game. Brr. As, as a game designer, you don't really get to opt out of this thing. I, and one of my favorite quotes ever is, is, you know, this idea that you cannot not communicate. There are certain subjects that you just don't get to opt out of. You, maybe for you, you decided you wanna, you wanna say any specific with your game, but you know that's not for you to decide. People will interpret your game in different ways, and you know maybe that some of these things, some of these interpretations, end up not being aligning with your own convictions, and that's a horrible situation because then you suddenly end up trying to defend a stance that you're not really behind. It's ah. Uh... On the other hand, you know it's it's just like a fun action game here that we're making here. There's not too much politics that we have to deal with in this kind of situation. But genres generally like to rely on certain tropes, and whenever there is tropes, it's kind of like a used car. You know, you want to kick the tires and look in the trunk. You don't want to realize that you know there is like a nest of angry wasps hiding in the trunk of your car when you're doing 60 on a highway, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Before you get in the car, you just want to make sure that everything is, is all right. And the same with tropes. We want to make sure that we're not repeating tropes we don't like. And there is a trope with shmups, which kind of like rubs me a little bit the wrong way. And that's kind of like something that inspired a lot of my work on the mockups here. A lot of the shmups out there are showing military sp aircraft, spacecraft, engaging in war-like situations, fighting against tanks and, you know, military equipment. They show war being fun and exciting and, you know, military solutions being cool and good and yikes. Yeah, in 2023, there is a war happening, you know, in this direction a couple of kilometers. That, that doesn't feel so great. So uh, kind of like a design challenge for many of the mock-ups here. I set uh, out to create situations and you know um, settings that kind of avoid this kind of like very focused militaristic approach. And whenever I use militaristic vehicles or something, I want to make sure that they're kind of ridiculous or kind of like really out there and, and fantastic, you know, so it, they, it stays firmly in the fantasy realm. This is my approach here. If you like military stuff, you do you but I wanted to kind of create some alternative designs here. And that's kind of like also nice because we get to do unique things. So yeah, so if we're not gonna show military aircraft, maybe even not aircraft that are shooting necessarily at things, what can we show? And so this meltdown idea that we had in the Femi case was like, okay, what if there's a mech that is there, that's kind of like a firefighting mech, and it jumps down into a shaft of a burning nuclear reactor with the goal of ex extinguishing the burning nuclear reactor and saving everybody. That sounds like an awesome hook. Yeah, so the hook is maybe something I should explain. So we talked about visual identity, something making sure that the game looks different from other games, that you recognize the game by its screenshots. The hook is kind of like similar to that, but slightly different. It's kind of like the conceptual, the idea behind the game is something that should people go like, ooh, that sounds interesting. Something that hooks them in. Let me show you quickly what I mean with that. So there's a great comic store here in Bonn. A hook can be understood as, you know, the thing that is on the cover of the comics. Sometimes on the cover of the comics, there will be some kind of like, you know, an image or a story that conveys an idea that makes you go like, ooh, what's happening there? I want to read that, you know? So in this case, it's Spider-Man and Black Cat. And they, the Black Cat says, like they're fighting ninjas. And Black Cat says, worst date ever. And that makes me go like, ooh, wait a minute, Spider-Man and Black Cat are dating? That's already a hook, you know, like, wait, what's with MJ, you know? But also, like, what happened in that date? Why they are fighting ninjas on a date, you know? Yeah, that's the hook. Um, the thing with hooks in comics is sometimes the hooks have nothing to do with what's in the they, There are no ninjas in the comic, is what I'm saying. <laughs> it's, it's a bit of a letdown. You have to pay off the hooks, you know? And also, you know, in this case, the hook really relies on you being already familiar with the characters. We don't have that kind of situation. Our hooks may have to be constructed differently. But yeah, firefighting mech, extinguishing nuclear reactors, that's a hook for me. Also, please, let us first acknowledge that this is an upside down vertical shmup. Yeah, so we're like, the fun thing about mock-ups is that we can experiment with ideas and test them out and see, you know, where they lead us without, you know, having to write any code and anything. 
again, this idea of fail faster. We want to create some ideas and see quickly if they work or not. So yeah, I had like this idea of this upside down vertical shmup. Uh, we, you kind of have this in games like uh, Down Well, right? That's kind of like a shmup adjacent kind of game where you're shooting downwards, uh, but it's more like a jump and run kind of uh, controls. Well, the same idea here, we're going down a shaft. So we're at the top of the screen and everything is going upwards. Uh, something I was struggling with, I already talked about, you know, this was supposed to be a mech, uh, but I was struggling to make the mech work at this resolution. This is already a very big sprite for Pico 8 and making, I, I just could not pull off a mech at this resolution. So I quickly reverted to a, um, to just sort of standard, you know, jet, but now it's a firefighting jet. And in this case, the enemies are kind of like drones or robots that are on fire or are trying to maybe carry away uh, burning material and you want to extinguish them. Something I wanted to do early on, maybe we can show this real quick. Um, something I would try to do early on is maybe to have, you know, some kind of like glow be at the bottom of the screen. So you're going towards, you know, warmth, right? But that made the screen really, really hard to read. So I quickly and focused on the re readability of the screen. Yeah, something that I was struggling with is making sure that, you know, the, the jet, like the jet is, is shooting water, right? So how do I show the tanks, the water tanks on the jet? I did a lot of experiments blue, but that was like a lot of colors. So I settled with gray that felt more, uh, you know, that's more cohesive. I tried to different designs. I tried different designs of the wings and inlets and everything. I did a lot of experiments to arrive at, at this, this design, which I'm quite happy with. Uh, something that's there that I mentioned in the Shmup Words video is that there is a cockpit here that is kind of like the center of the sprite and that is going to be the hitbox. So already thinking about, uh, you know, hitboxes and so forth. Yeah, but in the end, okay, so this was kind of like a crazy idea. I was kind of worried that, you know, upside down Shmup is a bit too out there for a lot of Shmup players. So I moved on to the next design. So this design, this mock-up is called Hypersonic FD. That's the third mock-up that I've created. And you can see, you know, this is, these are the designs, uh, these are the, mm, character sprites, the ship sprites from the previous mock-up. And now I created a different mock-up. This mock-up is, uh, is, is vaguely inspired by some military aircraft concept art that I found somewhere on the internet. This is a more conservative shmup design. So again, you can see we were looking top down at, the, at everything. That's, um, that's your spaceship. Uh, and you can see the ground scrolling beneath the spaceship. Uh, we are no longer diving into a shaft of a nuclear reactor. Now we are following an AI controlled train that is on fire and we're trying to extinguish the train as it's going because it's out of control. And maybe the train is, I don't know, loaded with nuclear material to make it like really urgent that we have to extinguish this with a firefighting jet. And you can see I was really struggling to make the train work. I had different designs for the train. Initially it was this design, but, and it, you know, that makes sense. It looks like a coal train, so it makes sense that it's burning. But that was a bit, I don't know, it didn't feel dangerous. So I tried to more of a sci-fi kind of train vibe. That was um, nice and sci-fi, but it's kind of like didn't read as a train. So like you really needed those, um, those headlights at the, at the end there to make it feel more like a train. And the train thing is also, I'm thinking about how to get around the Pico 8 limitations. So with Pico 8, you know, so in order to, you know, get the most out of, out of limited sprite space, if you're going to create a big sprite, you want to make sure that you get to reuse it quite often. So my, the idea here was that I'm going to create a big sprite of like a train wagon, you know, and the train is going to consist of multiple wagons that are kind of like similar to each other, but maybe have like different turrets or different enemies coming out of them. So you work your way from the back of the train to the front. Uh, and you have to fight each of the wagon of the train, and then when the tra that wagon is distinguished for some reason, it decouples, and then you get to the next train. So the entire uh, level would be composed of individual wagons of a train. And I, I thought that was really fun. I mean, trains and shmups are something that exists already. There's lots of shmups that have train sections, uh, but this shmup would be focused solely on trains. One little detail that I was struggling with, like I was, with any kind of like sci-fi stuff, it's sometimes, it's always just gray, right? Like how do we get some you know, vibrant colors? And especially with, with Pico 8, there's just so many grays to choose from, right? Um, something I stole or got inspired by, Paranoid Cactus made, a, made some beautiful pixel art. It's, yeah, I, I study his art a lot to kind of get inspiration and ideas from. And um, uh, Paranoid Cactus made a game called UFO Odyssey. 
And that game has a really cool logo that uses the same color scheme that I'm using here, but it also used blue as a specular highlight, which is a weird choice, but totally works. So I totally stole that idea from Paranoid Cactus. I hope he doesn't mind. So you can see me experimenting with this idea of a firefighting shmup, but I wasn't really sure if, if it worked. I was not quite satisfied. I didn't quite feel I was getting where I wanted to be. But the nice thing about mock-ups is that you can just move on to another mock-up. Okay, so this mock-up is called Fruit Crimes. And as you can see, it's another train shmup, but this time a completely different setting. So now in a back in a more desert-like setting, like, you know, in in the first star panda design, but now with trains. And this kind of actually a little bit inspired by the train job episode of Firefly. So one of the early episodes of Fire Firefly, the TV show, has, you know, they have a spaceship. It's a world where, you know, people can privately own armed spaceships. And in this episode, for some reason, that spaceship executes a heist on a moving train. Uh, which is a striking image and I thought it was really amazing and I saw an idea was maybe to take that and and uh, make a shmup out of it. So the idea here is that maybe, you know, this is some kind of situation where, um, you know, maybe there's a, some kind of empire or some kind of um, corporation that invaded the land of some indigenous people and is, you know, uh, harvesting fruit from their homeland and exporting them to different places and you're kind of like a band of rebels terrorists who uh, executes heists on those planes and takes the fruit back. So the idea is again, like with the previous designers, that you would have um, levels would consist of a train and you would battle each wagon after another. And as you're fighting the different wagons, fruit will fall out as pickups and you would pick up all those fruits. And that would maybe uh, tie into some kind of scoring system or maybe even some kind of progression system that you, you know, you maybe have different trains in front of you and you pick which train you want to execute a heist on to collect certain quotas of food to unlock maybe some features, something like this maybe. Maybe the trains are even procedurally generated. So you, I would maybe create a couple of train modules and the game could maybe then generate different levels by rearranging the, the train modules that maybe there's a very difficult train carriage kind of thing with a huge gun turret that's difficult to defeat and maybe there's easier ones and you would like pick and choose which train you want to execute a heist on uh, depending on the, on the wagon composition. I work on this concept quite a lot. You know, you can see the popcorn enemies are not something I'm really happy about. You know, they're just this anonymous uh, quadcopter drones. Uh, for the turrets, I actually used a sprite. I, I stole a bit of a sprite from GGLS3, which is fine. For mockups, is fine. We're going to see more of that late in the future. Uh, something I really struggled with is making a cool spaceship. And you can see like a whole different, like I created all those different designs trying to find the right kind of spaceship. Because, see, I, I didn't want the spaceship to be sleek like this design, this initial design I started out with, because this is supposed to be a heist. And a person executing the heist, this, their spaceship has to have enough cargo space. So I want to have a ship that looks like as if it has cargo space. Uh, this is like an, a design I settled on early on. And then later, after I finished some other mockups, I came back and created the final design, which is here. Um, this design I settled out on early on, but this kind of looks a little bit like you know, the design by um, Vector Pixel Star, you know, the previous design I showed you for, with the with a, a desert background moving. So uh, that was a bit too close for comfort. So I want to make sure that I create an original design. I actually also read it, the design of the train multiple times. I really want to make sure to nail the train. I spent a lot of time on this mock-up and it, it, it was one that I was really happy with. And I was like, I was really ready to just call it quits there. But I said, you know, I'm going to create at least 10 designs. So moving on. Okay, so this one is called Gone Fission. And it, again, it is inspired by a Famicase uh, card, uh, also called Gone Fission, but by Rob Davies from the Famicase 2020. I think at that point when I was working on this, I already started working on, I already started preparing work on um, high stakes. And I think that was kind of like one of the alternative cards that I considered maybe working on. So the idea here is that you're maybe in some kind of swamp environment and you have like a jet boat and you are going fishing, but the fishes that you're trying to catch are a mutated, you know, mut mutant fish. <laughs> and you, you're shooting the fish down uh, to turn them into sushi or something like this and then carry it back home. 
again thinking about you know how to make you know uh, level variety happen in the limited p uh, environment so the idea was maybe that you know you would always have the same swamp but maybe you would uh, be fighting against different fish there would be small you know popcorn fish but at the end there would be like a big fish boss fight and that fish boss fight would change so i would just maybe have to create different bosses and then maybe it would be maybe a bit more like um, monster hunter, you know, where you go on a hunt to hunt a certain monster to get their parts to upgrade your stuff to go on more monster hunts, more challenging monsters and so forth. One thing that I like about this design is that it's really unique. I, I don't think I ever saw a boat shmup. So that's already cool, I think. And as with previous design, I really struggled to make the boat happen, like to make something that is a cool boat that is, reads like a boat, but also, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it was difficult. I started out with this design, but also brought in this design, which is, uh, I think, pretty much the spaceship from uh, LSGG3. Uh, this was like an early design. And you can see, like, I tried diff very diff different approaches here before I arrived at this one. Still not 100% happy with the design of this boat. And also, I think this fish also looks a bit weird. Moving on. So this one is called Moons Haunted. <laughs> so this is inspired by, you know, the meme, the tweet meme, uh, The Moon's Haunted by Dustin Couch. Look it up. It's, it's hilarious. Anyway, uh, yeah, I thought that was a nice hook. Uh, and I thought, how about I make a game based on that tweet? And then maybe if people recognize the tweet, they will play the game. Um, the whole idea here is that you are flying in space uh, around the moon. This is an orbit of the moon. But the vehicle that we're that we're flying in, the spaceship that we're flying in, is just like the Apollo spacecraft, <laughs> the actual Apollo spacecraft. I'm a big, you know, space nerd. I really like, you know, the realistic space exploration stuff. So it was fun to recreate, you know, the Apollo spacecraft here, in in this kind of environment. And the idea is that the a spacecraft is, has been equipped with, you know, proton packs, as in Ghostbusters, and is shooting proton packs, trying to capture and defeat the ghosts that are in the orbit of Moon. This is actually the first shmup that we have in our mock-up that has slow scrolling background. So the idea is that you are in orbit and you would see you know, the surface of the moon slowly passing beneath you. Uh, the pickup is an astronaut. You may be rescuing a previous mission of the astronauts. I don't know. One special thing here is that I'm... Because that's actually how the Apollo spacecraft worked. You had like the command module and you have the lunar module. And I, I use, kind of used this, reuse this idea that the lunar module is kind of like the force uh, pod in our type. So you could have a force pod that you shoot at the enemies and you maybe remote to control a little bit, uh, kind of like an homage to, um, to our type, kind of like using a mechanic from our type here. Something that I um, struggled with here is making the ghosts cool. So yeah, these are some of the old ghosts, you know, like this. And yeah, these are not great ghosts. These looked a little bit cartoony. These are also of early designs. These looked a little bit too ridiculous and you know this was the moon's haunted or like it's 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 not a bed sheet ghost. You know? <laughs> so what I ended up doing actually is actually stealing some artwork which again is fine for a mock-up not so good for production. The idea was that I would steal some artwork now and if I'm gonna commit to this design that I would create my own ghosts that are really scary. For now, I just wanted to move on with the mock-up. So uh, some of the ghost designs here, I think I taken from the Game Boy game Gargoyle's Quest, which is an excellent Game Boy game. Something that I really thought worked really well here is there's good color separation here. Like the screen is insanely well readable because all of the ghosts have like these red clouds around them. So red is associated, the color red is reserved for the bad guys, for bad stuff. And uh, that makes it you know, really clear where the enemies are, which is sometimes like, that's something generally that shmups are struggling with. You are gonna put a lot of stuff on the screen and you wanna make sure that the screen is well readable. Making sure that the screen is readable is something that is really needs a proper setup and mockups are an excellent way to set up good screen readability by making sure there's some good fundamentals that maybe certain colors are reserved for certain types of objects so we can easily, your eyes can easily filter, you know, what's important and what's not important. So yeah, that was Moons Haunted. Okay, so this one is called Kaiju Defense Force. And yeah, this is a more of a traditional military kind of ap approach here. We are flying a military ship here. Um, this is actually a sprite from a previous mock-up. It's fine to reuse some art from previous mock-ups. 
And the idea was that, okay, so maybe if you're more a military ship, then maybe at least the thing that you're fighting is a bit more uh, fantastic. So the idea here was that you are fighting against Godzilla and other kaiju in a city environment. And it again, this is the second slow scrolling shmup. So the city underneath would scroll slowly and you would maybe even interact with the city a little bit. You would maybe see destroy, destroyed buildings. Maybe you can even destroy your buildings, uh, some buildings yourself. I don't know, maybe the boss would destroy buildings. Yeah, this was, um, we were talking about screen readability. This is definitely a game that is was tough to make uh, you know, read well. You can tell that there's like a lot of harsh contrast in the background and they kind of like really draw attention. They kind of create a lot of visual noise. It might be difficult to see what's what. I reserve the color green for the enemies. And also like with this whole concept, I also immediately realized that it's kind of difficult to come up with ideas of what the other enemies are. You are fighting the kaiju. Okay, that's the boss enemy. But what are the popcorn enemies, you know? And I also, drawing this background, immediately realized, oof, yeah, it's going to be difficult to create an entire city with, um, you know, within the limited sprite space of Pico 8. So yeah, that was that was causing a lot of headaches for me. And to make things even worse, like, you know, having like a character with limbs and so forth as your boss enemy is also kind of like difficult because you expect really nice fluid animations from that boss you want you want maybe the the kaiju to stomp around and so forth and that was just not that's got that's difficult to pull off in pico 8 so these this this mock-up creates a lot of challenges technical challenges for us you can already tell also not really happy with the way this Kaiju came out. He has like really broad shoulders for some reason. I, said, uh, I didn't look at reference images of uh, Godzilla. I maybe should have. Uh, a design with a lot of question marks. Moving on, this is called Save Our Cows. And at this point, I started stealing pixel art like crazy. And again, I want to say like for your own purposes, for your own internal uh, prototyping, purposes that's fine but if you commit to a design the actual graphics that you ship would need to be something that you create yourself so i have um, repurposed some art from uh, lsgg3 to create those those enemies here those ufo enemies i also the background the entire background is actually from a concept made by a studio called the brox corp who um, are working on a just recently released a shmup called Skies of Chaos. Back in the days, they were in the early stages of working on that, that shmup. And as a fun side project, they released like a mock-up of what their shmup would look like if it was made in Pico 8, which looked really great. It was a beautiful concept art. So I used that concept art as a background just to have like something in the background so I don't have to spend time pixeling out all this environment. Again, the idea is just to make you know, a vibe check, to make sure that, you know, if this is something that you would want to be working on. Concept-wise, this is actually closest to the thing I was kind of trying to avoid, making military look, you know, fun and cute. And it's like, uh, hmm. um, So yeah, you are definitely flying a military plane here. That's actually intended to be like a straight military kind of operation thing, to have a contrast against what you're fighting, which is like with a kaiju thing, it's something outrageous and weird and wild. And the idea is that you're fighting aliens, like again, not a unique concept in shmups that you're fighting aliens. Uh, but I want to focus on something specific here, and that is that the aliens are not invading the the earth, but they're actually arriving to, to abduct cows. <clears throat> so they are doing some mass abductions of cows, and you're trying to save the cows by shooting down uh, the aliens. That's kind of like the, the story here. That's why the pickups are actual cows. And this is a little bit inspired also by one of my favorite shmups, uh, Raiden. It has like this little sequence at the beginning where you're flying above a farm and then you can see like people leading a cow away. And I'm not sure, I never understood why. Like it's really cool detail and it's fun to, to look at it. But I always wondered like if maybe these are some kind of aliens that are trying to abduct the cow. I thought that was really fun. So this is me kind of like... Uh, make, turning the whole game into this little, this little animation, background animation. And again, same thing as with, uh, with a moon game uh, where I'm trying to make the aliens look red, the bad guys are red, uh, good stuff is blue, I guess, or gray, and uh, backgrounds is always green and blue. And actually here on the side, I'm experimenting with different color setups for the enemies to make sure you know they're clearly readable against the background. And I tried different things, but in the end, you know, red 
And this orange was kind of like the best choice. I even added an extra pink outline to make sure that the enemies stand out from the background. Same thing with a ship, by the way, with a player ship that also has a blue outline. The player shots are yellow, so that's also good. The UI is left over from that mock-up from um, you know Skies of Chaos, but it's fine. Something that is was kind of like a bit of a breakthrough here is that I made the cockpit of that ship really gigantic. And this bubble cockpit is actually something that I got inspiration from an unlikely source for. Finally, I get to show you this. <laughs> so this is a Lego set I saw on Taobao in China back in the days. Uh, you know, I was, I was just like struggling with all these concept art, I was struggling with all the designs. You, can, you saw me struggling with different designs for different ships and different uh, mock-ups. And then I saw this thing on Taubo and was like, ooh, yeah, gigantic bubble cockpit to make this kind of like chibi look happen. It's really something that solved a lot of problems with a lot of the designs with not just this um, spacecraft, this spaceship, but also other spaceships as well. So you can see me starting out with a more realistic proportioned spaceship up here, but then moving on to like this bubble cockpit concept and that's really just like immediately just nailing the, the look and feel of that. I don't know, it's supposed to be like a raptor, I guess. I don't know, I'm not really sure. And after I created this, I went back to this design and uh, updated this design here because this was, again, too close to that um, inspiration I had previously. So I did more iterations with more bubbly cockpit and that's how I arrived at this design. So you can see like really the advantage here of creating multiple mockups. Sometimes you learn something in a mockup that then feeds back into maybe a previous design. Sometimes while working one idea, you get another idea and you carry it forward. There is a problem with this uh, Save Our Cows design and that is I actually reached out to Brox Corp to the people who created this mockup and asked them if I can use this mockup as a template for my sprite sheet for the shmup. And they said again, no. And again, understandable, bigger company, not like a huge development studio, but you know, it's people who maybe invested a lot of time and money into this project. They don't want to mess around with that, you know? So if this project gets selected, I would have to redesign the background. Moving on. So yeah, with this bubble cockpit breakthrough, uh, I went back to, <laughs> went back once again into this idea of a robot diving into a nuclear reactor. And I came up with this design, which is called, yeah, this is just straight up called Meltdown. It's actually also uses the red that is, was also prominent in the Famicase uh, design, kind of like really good way of establishing, again, visual identity. With a bubble cockpit, I was able to kind of like create a mech that is reads better as a mech, so I didn't have the spaceship that I had before, but now I was able to come up with a design for a mech. You can see me really experimenting with this mech design here, and there was like a lot of things that I tried to figure out. So initially this design was kind of like, okay, you can, could see kind of like limbs uh, of the mech, right? Like this kind of starfish, but it was symmetrical. And in this pose, it was difficult to see the weapon, the water cannon, <laughs> whatever. Um, if I make the like, if I make the make the cannon really big, then it would obscure the legs. You wouldn't see the legs anymore, and then it wouldn't really read as a mech anymore. If I make the cannons really thin, so you could still kind of see the legs, then that wouldn't read as a water cannon anymore. It was tough. So the here the solution was to make the to rotate the entire body of the mech a little bit to the side, so it's kind of like not symmetrical, but you know in a three quarters view. And that allowed uh, the mech to carry the weapon one handed. And so the pose would re read more clearly, but you would still have that awesome gigantic cannon. Something that by the way, helped me nailing this pose. I don't have that thing here, but also I got another little Lego thing that was a bit of a Lego mech, actually using the same bubble cockpit here. And that allowed me to kind of, I actually had like the model with me. I don't have it anymore, but I had it the model there where I was doing pixel art and I rotated it so I could see, you know, the angles at which the limbs are going getting out. And that really helped me nailing, you know, this, this pose here. Now this in turn introduces a lot of other problems. As you can see now, the axis on which we are firing is no longer aligned with the cockpit. And I wanted the cockpit to be the hitbox. 
So now you're not firing out of your hitbox anymore, like the, they're not aligned correctly anymore. So this is kind of like another no-no to do with, with um, in shmups and it might cause some backlash. And again, it's the upside down vertical shmup idea that I followed early on. Yeah, something I don't like about this design is a little bit, um, the enemies are, uh, they're lacking the contrast that I would probably need to have. It's kind of like difficult to see the enemies a little bit. But I really like this design, like the red is really vibrant, it's visually striking, you know, amazing visual identity, there's a hook attached to it. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it, just, it just looks radical. Moving on, at the end I had like, a, I wanted to do like a quick and dirty thing. I was kind of like, <laughs> I felt like, like creating these many mockups took quite some time, we're gonna talk about it in a second. But at the end I wanted to do like a quick dirty design, something that's very, very different from the things that we had before. So I decided to go with a fast shmup again. Well, I guess this is also a fast scrolling shmup to some extent. But yeah, I wanted to create something that is um, fast scrolling and that has um, goes back to you know our beginnings where we had like very reduced color palette. So again, using a very reduced color palette, just black and white and one special color and creating something that's visually very striking again. Uh, I was blown away at how quickly I was able to get this out. Just reducing your available colors to just two is in, does wonders to the speed at which you're working. I was able to get it out just like that. Yeah, I wanted to have a ship shooting at something that is bad and evil and I decided to go with insects because insects are kind of like icky. <laughs> That's all I was thinking about. This actually ended up being kind of close to a game that came out at the same time I was working on this. So I immediately was like, oh no. Uh, there is a game called Infinity Star, uh, Binary Star Infinity that came out in February 2021. That was around the time I was working on this. Quite a coincidence, but I swear I was actually working on this independent from Binary Star Infinity. It was just an accident. You know, if you're struggling with pixel art or if, you're, if your pixel art takes too long, then the lesson here was definitely just reduce the number of corals you work with. That speeds up everything so crazily. All right, so in summary, what did we learn from creating 10 mockups for our advanced shmup? So one of the reasons why I really wanted to make so many mockups in the first place and why I think you should make so many, well, maybe not that many, but at least some multiple mockups is that you sometimes have these ideas that you sit on that you kind of like trying to, like you're thinking about them a lot, but you don't have an outlet for them. And they kind of like blocking your creative working because you, you invest all of your creative energy into those into this one pet idea, but you don't thinking about alternatives. And mockups are a great way to get those ideas out, which might actually not be good, and start thinking maybe about some other ideas. So you can see me, you know, working on ideas like you know, like, like this meltdown idea, like this firefighting shmup. And you see me approaching this over and over again. It's, it does didn't work out in the in the beginning. But getting it out allowed me to think about other things, which then eventually allowed me to finally arrive at you know, some kind of design that of that initial idea that I was actually happy with. So you want to put yourself in a position where you're encouraged to get those ideas out, to kind of like get the process started, get the process rolling. And you can see how one idea builds into another. You can see, for example, how you know I start with this idea, but then I try a different approach and that means I have to do, create some different environment. Then I come up with a train idea, which is then continued here. And then here I start thinking about maybe some other ways of making procedural levels, which is then continued here and so forth. Or here I'm thinking about, you know, some kind of ridiculous scenarios and then I'm coming up with other ideas for ridiculous scenarios and then I'm coming up with other ideas for ridiculous scenarios. And then here I'm uh, discovering some of this kind of like visual breakthrough that works really well, which allows me to go back and fix some problems on previous ideas that I had. So you can see like how all those ideas that you're working on are in conversation with each other and are kind of like enhancing each other. A rising tide lifts all of the boats. So what happened afterwards? Well, afterwards, and that's kind of the goal, that's why we're creating multiple mockups, is I compiled all of the mockups together and I posted them everywhere on social media I could to get feedback. I asked a lot of people to vote for their favorite designs from those nine. Or 10, I guess. And yeah, that's also one of the things that I that is important why we're creating multiple designs in the first place. Whenever you post a single design and you ask for feedback, you're not gonna get great feedback because nobody will say like, 
oh no, you're this is this looks like a bad game. Like people, this is the only thing you post. People will be nice to you. They will say nice things about your game. The only way to make people actually give you useful feedback, to actually say like, oh, I don't like this because this, is to offer them multiple alternatives that they can compare to each other. And again, this is this idea of fail faster. Instead of picking one game, like you know, like my firefighting shmup that I had initially in my mind, and just making it, and then maybe realizing after months of work on this, and maybe years working on this, realizing that maybe that wasn't such a good idea in the first place, I get to skip to the chase and just create a bunch of different ideas and see which of the ideas works best in front of the audience before actually committing to one idea. So I send out the request for the polls. I ask everybody to vote for their favorite design and the results of the poll are not there anymore. In August, 2022, not that long time ago, uh, Fandom, the website Fandom at some point bought Straw Poll where I conducted my, my poll and they just closed it down without an ability to access this data in any way. They didn't even upload it to archive.org or something like this. It's just, all of the polls are just gone. Fandom! Yeah, sadly, I don't have the final results here. I do have like this, which I kind of got from um, Wayback Machine or something like this. And, but that was like very, very early. That's like on the first day of voting, I got this. However, I do remember what the most popular design was and it was Save Our Cows won by quite a long margin. So it eventually it turns out to be the most popular design from all of the ones that I posted. So the question for me that arose at this point is whether I wanna listen to the wisdom of the crowds and go with something that is visually generally a bit more safer and try to experiment within here. Or if I'm gonna use one of my crazy designs here that are kind of like a bit out there and try to make them work. Like there's problems to solve here and those are not insignificant. In addition to those designs not being the most popular ones. And another thing I also thought about is like, this is supposed to be a tutorial. This is supposed to be kind of like a more vanilla kind of shmup, right? So people then can then watch that and create more outrageous designs later on. And this is why for this tutorial, we are going to make this game save our cows. We are going to make this shmup, a shmup where you fly a plane above some kind of landscape and shoot at wacky aliens who are trying to abduct cows. And with that, let's get to the doggy zone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so in a previous tutorial, the doggy zone was this place, you know, where you get to do stuff, where you get to come up with ideas and, and stuff like that. And so for the advanced map tutorial, you know, this is not gonna be, like at the beginning, it's gonna be maybe more tutorial-like, but as we move on, it's gonna be less and less like a tutorial and more and more like just a dev vlog. You're gonna be watching me working on this game. So this is just like a warning for you because at some point we just might drop this idea of a doggy zone. We might stop having doggy zones because we get into really nitty gritty detail that is really difficult to create an exercise from. As for how you should follow this tutorial, well, um, something that really worked well in the past was kind of like doing, uh, maintaining two projects at the same time. One project is going to be following the stuff that I will be working on, so you can like replicate the stuff I'm working on. And the other project is your own project, where you can take then lessons from that and incorporate into your project. This way you are in sync with what I'm working on, but you also get to work on your own stuff. And so the dog is on for this first episode is obviously you are supposed to make a mock-up. The easy version of this, make at least one mock-up. Please make at least one mock-up I want. You want to have an image like this where that shows the game that you want to be working on. The hard mode is make at least three mock-ups. And when you make at least three mock-ups, I want you to post the mock-up somewhere on social media. You can post it in our Discord as well to get feedback from people and you know pick the right mock-up inspired at least by the feedback that you get about those mock-ups. Yeah, uh, and also I just forgot, I probably also should talk about the deadline because this is gonna be a bit of an unusual uh, doggy zone. This is not a doggy zone that is due to the next episode, but this is gonna be a bit of an ongoing doggy zone. So really the first episode where you really have to have the mock-up finished is gonna be kind of like episode nine. So you have some time to work on this because this will take some time. 
Speaking of which, you can support this project on Coffee. That's right. I would like to give a big shout out and thank you to all of the beautiful people on Coffee who are supporting this tutorial series. One of the major perks of being a supporter on Coffee is that you get access early to new episodes. You get to jump ahead and you don't have to wait. Check it out on coffee.com slash lazydevs. Yes, that is right, ladies and gentlemen. This was this long first episode. We, I walked you through all of the designs that we had. On the next episode, we're gonna take this mock-up, we're gonna take this design, we're gonna break it down into components. We're gonna make a plan of what we have to do to make this design a reality. And we're gonna start coding finally. See you next time around, guys. Bye-bye.